Welcome back. After creating the project, this is an, the Azure Functions project. Maybe not all of you are familiar with Azure Functions. So basically, we get started directly building the project, but I'm going to explain concepts on the way and I will recommend you some resources on the other side so you can learn basically Azure Functions. But for this session, we are going to take a look at the project and understand it a little bit so you can uh, continue with the next one but when we start creating functions. So basically, the Azure Functions project by default, as you can see, it contains, if you create it through Visual Studio, you're going to see that we have a function one over here, which is uh, basically a class that contains a function, one of our functions. And we have the host.json. Host.json, this is a very important file. Sometimes you need to manipulate that, sometimes no. Basically, this file contains the configuration that affects all your functions at once. So when you deploy that, Whenever you change any of the configurations, for example, like logging, so this one affects how, like what is the logging settings of the Azure application insights. You can add other configurations of um, like Cosmos DB connectors or stuff like that. Whenever you wanna add like here, there is a list of all the possible settings that you need that's available for you by the uh, host the JSON file, so I mentioned the link in the description box. So basically, for our course, we are not going, I think, to change anything with that one. The next file that you have is local.settings.json. I think this one is not available for you through the uh, source control. So basically, this is available. Uh, I think if you if we check GitHub right now after I push the changes, I don't think that you are going to see this file over here because this file, as you can see, it's uh, it's not tracked by the uh, by the source control or by the by the get. So basically, uh, you need to create this file locally. And uh, what does it contain? This is you can compare this one at the app settings.json that you can find in ASP.NET Core. But those for development variables because when you deploy to Azure, we are going to set those variables or those uh, yeah those variables or those settings in the configuration of the Azure function app itself. So what it contains is, those are your settings over here. So for example, if you wanna add like some setting, we put it over here and we give it a value just like normally, just like any other thing. So basically you can put it over here and it contains the one of the most important settings, which is Azure Web Jobs Storage. This is the traditional or the, the, the default name of the Azure storage account that this Azure functions needs to run. Actually, every Azure function app needs um, a storage account to run. So here you need to set the connection string of that Azure storage account. But because we are locally and because we are using the emulator, by default, Azure Web Jobs storage gives the use development storage equals true. Uh, this is the connection string of the emulator. So right now, if I run the app, it's actually using this one. It's using the storage account for many reasons. Uh, one of them like to store the log files, for example. Uh, this is one of the reasons. Some other reasons, like if you are using durable functions or like it stores like things about the status of the app and stuff like that. So basically every Azure application, Azure functions requires a storage account. So this is a storage account and you need to create that file on your place and put this code in it. So basically you have access for, for, for that. Uh, other than that, the app will basically not work because there is a missing connection string for the Azure phone, for the storage account. And uh, yeah, so this is those are only the files that you need to talk about right now to create a new function. So here we have function one, and later on we are going to create startup.cs. So we have a place where we can register our services through the dependency injection. But if you want to create a function using Visual Studio, we had add a new Azure function. And you're going to be asked about the template of that function. But before that, let's call this one uh, list wallets. Like this is a function that we actually need. And it's going to ask you for the trigger. Like what is the trigger? Is it, is it HTTP trigger with open API, time trigger, queue trigger, uh, SQL input, SQL output, blob trigger, event grid, like here the list of all the event of the possible triggers. So every Azure function, has what's called an input binding and output binding. So an input or it's a trigger. Uh, th there is a trigger that comes through an input binding. So for example, 
this one is going to be an HTTP trigger with Open API because we need to allow uh, Swagger, so we have documentation for our API. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's ignore this uh, just for now a little bit. Uh, what we have, what we need to care about is that we have this that's called the function name attribute, which gives your function a name, as you can see over here. And he, this is a normal function, public async task, action result, because it's an HTTP function like it's going to return. This one is an HTTP trigger, so it contains what's called, and this is the trigger, this is how you define it. And this trigger takes some attributes. So the attribute that this one takes is, if we take a look at this, let me go and open this function, you can see that we have, it takes the auth level, like this function should be protected, right? We're going to protect the Azure function app using P2C when we deploy online, but for now, the protection level is also using like we have a key. So we send the link of the Azure function plus a key that we are going to fetch from Azure. And we have the methods. The methods is like what the kind of methods available for you that this function is available for. So as you can see, we have get and post. So this function is available as a get method and as a post method. And here, if you need to define a route, so for example, it is like, something uh, slash wallets slash list something like that so you can use this route uh, parameter and this is an http trigger so this means http requests trigger this function so basically you need that request right and this is the http request that you can that's available for you it's available via parameter so this the trigger is HTTP trigger and this is then input binding. And this is the context of your request. So for example, if we are using a timer trigger, uh, there's going to be nothing over here because it's just uh, the timer. But if you are using like a queue trigger, so when a message added to queue, uh, this function will, 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 will start. So in that case, there's going to be a queue trigger and there is here a string, which is the message that contains your your uh, the message that comes from the queue so basically we have HTTP trigger uh, we have a trigger an input binding and we have what we call an output binding which is a set of integrations for your Azure functions with Azure so for example some of the output bindings for example like we can have a Cosmos DB output binding and in that case what we do is that here we will have an object like that. So those output bindings just simplify your development experience. So instead of writing your code by yourself to save something to the Cosmos DB, you can use this output binding by just filling out this object. Like that. So just fill out this object before leaving the function, it's going to write this one to uh, the Azure Cosmos DB by specifying, of course, the connection string and by specifying the name of the, the, the container that you want to save your data. So those are called output bindings. And I think you can have multiple output bindings, but for input, you can have only one. And that makes sense. So we are throughout our... Uh, Coding experience, most of our functions, if we review the architecture, will use actually the, the HTTP trigger, but we have one that, this one that works via the queue store, the queue uh, trigger, and this one works via the time, timer trigger. So we are going to have variety of functions. Uh, we are not going to use output bindings too much because of one reason like this one, there is a function that's going to write to the blob storage to write the picture of, of an invoice or documents related to this transaction that you are saving. When you fill out the output binding, it directly creates that blob for you, which is good. But the other side of that, it doesn't give you any flexibility. What if I want to change some properties for this blob available on the blob container? 
Uh, you you cannot do that. You have to do you have to upload it manually and make your upload by yourself. So we're going most of the time to use the manual uh, things. But for example, when we save something, we want to push that as an event grid to send an event. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm so in love in this technology. So basically, there is a lot to learn throughout the way. But I highly recommend you going through the Azure Functions documentations to learn, especially if you check only the concepts over here. So you can just see, okay, what is there? And um, in the course, I'm always going to be uh, explaining every little thing in details. So basically, uh, you're going to have a deep understanding about what, what's going on behind the scenes. It's not just about, this is an Azure function that we're going to write. So we're going to explain it, so you're going to learn. Um, but here, you can have some uh, cool stuff like triggers and bindings. It explains everything that I was talking about and it shows you like different concepts and stuff like that and because we are building a real application you are going to see the real scenarios even the advanced ones as I've said when the output binding doesn't work for us so I hope you get the idea behind the out of this and um, in the next video we are going to uh, create uh, the project that we're supposed to do in this video but I decided to make a video about uh, explaining what the actual functions is and uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.